before Dave leaves, I do want to thank you both for inviting me again. This, along with the ESMO World GI Conference, are my two favorite conferences of the year, and will remain so. Um, and I get to en enjoy debating yet another good friend. Axel, though, <laughs> has been choosing debates for me um, where there's no data whatsoever to support it over the years um, because he keeps telling me and I don't believe this, that I do a good job of coming up with something. He's just saying it and then snickering in the back room about how he's made fun of me again. So um, <laughs> Only you can pull that off. Yeah, so instead I'm going to take you guys back to medical school and residency because I think this is a, a situation where we really need to look at the gem cape. I'm not sure I'll prove gem is the treatment since I have absolutely no data. It's only one slide, by the way. Um, and again, I forgot my, uh, my, uh, um, my disclosures. I do get money from, uh, um, from Celgene. I get money from a lot of things. I'm going to be playing my guitar out on the street a little later. <laughs> um, I am in Music City. Um, but the gem, the gem cytobine and cape cytobine study needs some scrutiny. Um, <clears throat> this is it. Uh, comparison of adjuvant gemcitabine, capecitabine, and gemcitabine monotherapy. I'm going to disclose something. I don't know if I'm allowed to disclose, but I don't care. Uh, the first submission was to the New England Journal of Medicine. It didn't get in the New England Journal of Medicine. I accepted it with, I, oh, no, I stated that it needed to come back with major revisions. It didn't. Just think about that. <laughs> So this is the slide from the Lancet article, overall survival on SPAC4. Now, the reason they might not have submitted it back is they might have felt me unreasonable in my review. Um, and I can be unreasonable. That's my favorite part of me. Um, <clears throat> there is a clear survival benefit in this Kaplan-Meier curve. Um, there is also lovely, as you can see, a grand total of 13 patients here, 28 patients here. Um, so the five-year survival based on 28 patients, this is a Kaplan-Meier curve based on estimates, which is what Kaplan-Meier curves are, okay? So how did gemcitabine and capecitabine versus gemcitabine and nabpaclitaxel perform in metastatic disease? Well, you can see the response rate, and I'm using investigator assessed because the first study was, the gem cape was investigator assessed. Um, the response rate looks to be higher in gemcitabine uh, nabpaclitaxel. Uh, disease control rate really doesn't look a whole lot different when you look at when you add up the numbers, uh, and the progression-free survival doesn't actually look a whole lot different. So the overall survival looks a little bit better, um, and the overall survival of the control arms look fairly similar. So gem napaclitaxel, when you're doing the illegal thing of comparing study to study, looks overall a little bit better, uh, giving me some support <laughs> um, loosely. Um, how did Jim Cape do in the um, advanced pancreatic cancer setting? And what happened with the publication from this same group? So it was a phase three study of Jim Cape versus Jim. It was first reported in uh, 2005. Um, and it was positive at the time. It was remarkably positive with an incredible hazard ratio of 0.8. For, for those of you who don't know, I believe John Strasberg presented some data with a hazard ratio of 0.29 this morning uh, for, uh, uh, for the uh, PRRT. So hazard ratio 0.8 means you have an 80% chance of being dead on GEM CAPE if you were supposed to be dead on GEM. Lovely thought. Um, the study design was powered uh, to detect a, one year, uh, a difference in one-year survival increasing from 20 to 30%, and the one-year overall survival looked the same for both arms. But that was barely mentioned in the article. The article, as many articles do, focused on other endpoints, not the primary endpoint of the study. Um, so same group, remember. And again, the Kaplan-Meier estimator is a statistic, and several estimators are used to approximate its variance. That's according to Wikipedia. I got those words. That's a, that's a direct quote from Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. Um, it's, it's even better than getting your news from Breitbart. So um, um, the ultimate results, uh, gemcitabine and capecitabine went from positive, statistically significant to negative, not significant, when it was published four years later. Four years. Um, to answer the negative trial, the authors babbled about how uh, negative gemerlotinib was with a hazard ratio of 0.81 compared to their hazard ratio of 0.86, which was their final hazard ratio. So somehow, uh, gemerlotinib was worse than theirs, even though the hazard ratio was better. 
<laughs> then they created a fake meta-analysis and somehow pa this passed the reviewers at JCO in a baffling and almost inappropriate article. Um, what about the adjuvant trial? Well, this trial was designed to detect a hazard ratio of 0.74 between the gemcitabine and gemcitabine plus capecitabine groups. This is the part of the article we're supposed to read. We all read the abstract and then we go on. Um, but let's face it, we were taught to do this better. And sometimes we need to. And I think this is important. Uh, with the use of a two-sided alpha level of 0.05, two-sided, which is right, 480 events required to obtain 90% power. Since their, uh, since their endpoint is um, survival, I assume the events that they were looking for were, were deaths. That, that would be a good assumption, but they never quite say that in the article, one of my objections to this original publication. Um, we estimated the 480 events could be obtained by enrolling 722 patients over six years, and by the way, it took them almost exactly six years to enroll. They were fantastic at their estimate. Um, and allowing each patient to have a minimum uh, follow-up of up to two years, and they actually inflated the analysis because they figured they'd have patient withdrawals, and I thought that was very wise. So well-designed clinical trial, and there is no perfect clinical trial but there are perfect clinical trial papers. Um, and again, these are the uh, survival curves. Oops, did I do this twice? Oh, no. So again, the statistics, primary endpoint has a ratio of 0.74, 480 events. There were interim analyses at 100, 200, 300, and 400 events. There was an interim analysis on December 11, 2015. I do not know which one of those four analyses it was. I doubt it was the 100 or 200, but I can't tell if it was the 300 or 400. It was not the final analysis. We know that because they said they decided to um, recommend early publication based on a clear signal. Um, there is no info on the number of death events in the publication. No info on which interim analysis caused the early stop and 557 patients had relapsed or died, but again, their endpoint, their, their event is supposed to be death. So it really doesn't matter how many relapse, I mean, it's important for the relapse for free survival endpoint, but that wasn't the final, that wasn't the primary endpoint of the study. So these are not final results. If the final results are still positive, then this is a small improvement over the older results with gemcide being alone. I certainly hope that it's a small improvement, um, well, I would rather see a big improvement. I'm hoping for that from one of the other regimens, such as GEM, NAP, Baclitaxel, but those results are not available. The final results are not positive. Will they be published in a timely manner? Four years between publication of their first, study, their first publication and their second on the last one. We have to be cautious about accepting results on face value and not dissecting the data the way we were taught in our training. I think it's important to realize that while GEM CAPE appears to be the winner on that study, um, is that study really accurate yet? I don't know. So why use gem nab paclitaxel? Again, a higher rate of response in metastatic disease, and when we're trying to improve recurrence-free and overall survival, response is what we need. Death of cells, period. Um, it's a definitely statistically significant improvement over gem cytobine alone, which gem cape is not in the metastatic setting. It's unlikely that gem nab paclitaxel will be underpowered when it comes out. It's a very large study, nor will it likely be presented too early. I hope not. Um, I admit I'm on the steering committee, so I will push that it does not get presented too early, but it doesn't mean I'll win um, because I don't believe in presenting too early. And uh, will it be uh, uh, negative for outcomes? I don't think so. I think it'll be a positive trial, but we've been surprised before, colon cancer being the classic disease. So that's where I end and leave it to Tony to try and actually prove this thing was a decent study or a decent report.